Welcome to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner, and with me is Anthony and Mushu, and didn't give you a chance to say it. One and only. Okay. And whatever. Thank goodness there's only one. I couldn't think the world could stand more than that. But uh, we have a show for you tonight, and it's going to be a good one. Uh, took some time to put it all together and do the interviews and talk to people we need to talk to from all this, this, this uh, weirdness that went on. But before we do that, let me tell you about uh, how to get a hold of me. Josh Turner at PRTPodcast.com. That's how you get a hold of me. My Instagram is Josh Turner 940 And send me a message saying, hey, I'm a listener to the show and I'll, I'll, I'll approve you. And on Facebook, same thing. Uh, Josh Turner. And just go and find me. You'll see me there with my wife. That's a profile pic I have on there uh, as of this recording anyway. Um, sometimes I change my profile pics, but that's what it is right now. The one where I got, I was standing in front of like banana wallpaper. I don't really use that one. It's a backup account. So just send stories or whatever to Messenger or to fa- uh, f- uh, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, or you can send them to uh, my email. That being said, we um, have just returned from the conference. As of this recording, we will have been, that's what's been going on. And so here's what I'm going to tell you. If you want to help out with the show, become a Patreon supporter. A $10 tier, after two months, you get a swag bag, $20 tier, swag bag, $30 tier, $40, $50 tier. If you go into the $40 and $50 tiers, you get my books along with other authors' books. And you get like three books. And then we send you a a T-shirt or a hoodie, depending on what season it is, and a hat. And you get all kinds of other stuff. You get stickers and keychains. The $30 tier, $40 tier are virtually the same. You said $40 tier, you get one of my books. $50 tier, you get both of them. So that's what we got going on, folks. Join the Patreon, become a member today, and help out with the show and help us continue to bring you great content. Because honestly, without the Super Chats and the, and the, uh, I know the ads can be annoying, but without that and the Super Chats and then you know, when we do the live streams and then what we get from Patreon, we would not be able to do this. Okay, folks, I'm just telling you right now, you guys can help support us. And if you're only listening to us on on uh, Spotify or Apple or Google, or whatever, uh, be sure and check out the live streams on YouTube because the live streams like this past, uh, not this past weekend because it was conference, but the weekend before, bunches of stories we told on Sunday. I mean, we went around the horn with a lot of different stuff: Bigfoot, Dogman, ghosts. We went, in, we got into everything. So just go ahead and, and like and subscribe too. We need you to do that for us, please. And uh, I uh, let's, let's let's get started. We got anything else to talk about? No, I, I think we're eager to get started. Yep. Okay, so if anybody's familiar with the story, it's in my book, and it's 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 spun off from the Hernandez Ranch uh, stories. What ended up happening was, and, and these are just stories, folks. These are real people who had encounters, that things that happened to them, and so. You know, it's it's real trivial to say, oh, it's a story, you know, but these are experiences. These are encounters people had. It's not like you, they're just nobodies. You know, these are people. They suffered through this. And I say suffered through this is putting it lightly. They, they, they were plagued by these these things for a while. And uh, I've been kind of following up with them, you know. For the most part, they live their lives, and it's pretty normal and mundane that most of them have moved away from that area, or the epicenter of it anyway. And – but – it continues, uh, the stuff continues. And this particular person was in my book in the, in werewolves and dogman phenomena. Go get it. It's on, uh, Amazon. Amazon. The Bigfoot phenomena is the other book. It's on Amazon. Go check them out and go get them. If you didn't make it to the conference where I could sign it, go buy them on Amazon. And w- what happened was there was a, there was a young lady named Helica. Now, Helica had a slumber party when she was a teenager. Well, what what started out as just an innocuous event, no big deal, turned into something that was horrific. And what happened was Joe didn't know. They, they had asked for some board games that her mother had put away. And she didn't know where they were at. So she asked her stepdad, Joe, who is Joe Hernandez, who had the incident that happened to him when he was um, – it was a, one of the stories I told on another show. And he had had an incident where he was – uh, doing some work in cabin cabinetry and something came into the house and tried to attack him and he got away. 
Um, but, uh, yeah, he had uh, some incidents. So they moved on the other side of a town called Buda. Now they live out in the country. Um, well, on the country, I say like it's a subdivision that's kind of out in the edge of town. Um, but he didn't, didn't, when did he, he's like, I didn't think nothing of it. I just went and I grabbed the games. There was two of them and I brought them to them. They said that mom had put up these two games, his stepdaughter. And he's like, I look down, I see, I see the top game is just like some board game, whatever. And he's like, she had tricked me. The mother had just put those games up on the top, you know, put up up on a shelf somewhere in the back of the closet and covered everything, you know, whatever. Well, her and her friends didn't know where they were at. And she couldn't just go into her mom's room and start digging around because Joe's in there. So you know, Joe's like, my wife's at work. It's like, you know, eight, eight in the evening or something. She's working swing shift. And uh, he said, you know, they come in there and they're like, hey, can we can we get these games that mom put up? Started describing them. And, he, and she goes, okay. He's like, I'm stupid. I thought Ouija was like a game. I didn't <laughs> think nothing of it. Oh, like wow. Being like, yeah, because he's like, I, I thought it was actually a game called like, you know. That poor guy. They, well, he said he thought it was Quiha. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he literally thought that. He goes, you know, he's, he's, he's like, dude, I'm Mexican. I thought it was Quiha. I didn't know what that was. Well, yeah, if you just see the word and you, and you never yeah. heard of it, you're not going to know how it's yeah. pronounced. Because yeah. he thought Ouija board was spelled differently. And I was like, a lot of people think that until they figure, you know. Now, this was years ago. She's a in her, you know young lady now, went to college and everything. And he goes, he gets the Ouija board, you know, and this other game that was there. And they didn't care about the other game. They were just trying to trick him into getting that one. And he gave it to him. And they took it. They started playing with it. And after, you know, a few little questions, whatever, it seemed like something was happening, but not, they couldn't tell for sure. And her one friend, Amber's like, oh, this is ridiculous. Nothing's really happening. This is bull crap, whatever. And the one friend... There were, there were four of them all together. Beatrice, she was like, I'm not into this. I don't I don't like this. Let's quit doing this. Something's wrong. She said she felt like a sick like feeling in her stomach. And when I talked to her, she's like, have you ever felt? I said, yeah, I've felt that before. And as recently, I have been talking to her and getting some information from her. Because she was there when this happened. And, and Helica is the one that, you know, his name is in the book. But when you look at this case, to me, it ties it together. It shows you what's going on. And, and I'll tell you why. They asked a question. They said, didn't your dad see a werewolf one time? And she said, yeah. Yeah, my family used to live out on a ranch. And there's, you know, we, you know he, he worked in that area. And he, she said, yeah, one night he was out there working for, for on a friend's uh, house as a, as a side gig. And of course, he worked for the company we worked that we we did security for her one time. Y'all know that. And uh, he said, you know, she said, yeah, he saw this werewolf-like creature. My mother claims to have seen one too, um, but it was that was a separate incident when she was with uh, uh, what's his name Jerry's uh, wife. And we've talked about all that. And she said, well, why don't you ask the board? what your dad saw that night because they were talking about it. They were just kind of kicking it around. So they said, you know, it's a good idea. So she says, we're sitting on the bed, just talking, whatever. And so the other friend's sitting on the floor and that's Beatrice. And she's like, I, she's like, I felt like literally the, fo the floor get cold when they started playing with this Ouija board and said, hey, Ouija, they asked the question. They was like, can you show us what Joe saw? Oh, no. And so... Nothing happened right away, but then suddenly the, 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 the closet door opened. She had those double closet doors, you know? Yeah. And they flew open, and this thing appears, and it's so big that it was like it was like it was trying to manifest itself in our world. Now, this story's in the book, of course, but I mean, you know, it was push, it was gripping the sides, you know, of the of the wall, you know, the what do you call these? The the not baseboard. What is that baseboard? What is that? Oh, like the, oh, the trim. Yeah, yeah the, the trim, trim. Yeah. Like, the door. like the door jam. And she didn't say that's what it was doing, but I, I know from what she was trying to describe to me, that's what it was doing. And she said that it literally was like pushing its way out. And the, the from the waist down, there was no legs. It just looked like a what she described as black smoke yeah. swirling around. And she said that there was like this rushing water noise that some of them, and their heads felt like they were like, they got this intense pressure. And she's like, my eyes feel like they're going to come out of my head. This is Angelica talking. And she says, Beatrice gets up. 
and starts stumbling around and then runs out into the hallway and collapses. And all this chaos is going on. Her other friend's opening the window. This is a two-story house. And she's trying to climb out onto the roof and get out of there. And so there's all this stuff. The other, other friend runs into the bed. She herself starts throwing things at this whatever, you know, and screaming at the top of her lungs. And eventually, Joe hears it and he comes running in there and it stops before he gets to there. And uh, she described it, you know. And then a couple of days go by and Joe and her are driving. They went to get some food in town and uh, she's like, we're on our way back. And she's like, she's like, Joe, I want to ask you a question. She's like, what did that thing look like? And he goes, do you really want to go there? And she said, yeah, I want to know. So he described it and it was that to a T. Now in interviewing her <clears throat> and it was interesting to me that she did make the distinction, like on her own, she kind of thought maybe it was the board was really just showing her, right? Not necessarily that creature was being brought over, but something that was similar maybe, you know? And I said, yeah, or it could have been, you know? The size and the width would sound about right, you know, with this creature. Now, of course, Joe had had some experiences, you know, I think we've talked about that too on the show, beyond that went beyond what whatever you know and one of them was like he was riding a motorcycle i don't know if y'all remember that on the devil's backbone and something happened um but that's not what we're here to talk we're here to talk about her uh friend's experiences now when she told me that when al helica told me what she'd seen it was just identical to what joe and i went back and listened to those episodes on that other show and joe got you know it's, it's crazy and it was uncanny, like he had described it, you know, like what he saw. And that's what she saw, her and her friends. A couple of her friends won't talk about it. They're terrified that they, they won't talk about it at, for, for nothing. Well, Beatrice was the one that went into the, into the hallway and collapsed. And I think that's important to, to remember that because she was the one most affected afterwards because whatever this was that came from the Ouija board, began to, I I say, attach itself to her is putting it lightly. It tried to possess her, really, is what it was. The second or third night, um, they ended up calling an ambulance. Ambulance checked him out, and there was nothing nothing was wrong, you know. She just had an increased pulse. And one of the ambulance drivers kind of made a joke, was like, maybe you should quit playing with Ouija boards, you know. Uh, good, good advice, uh, you know, and she said that he was very nice. He was a guy that worked, you know, whatever. And she said that Beatrice had refused to go to the hospital. She was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. She didn't want to destroy the, the night, whatever, but they stayed up the rest of the night terrified. And they wouldn't go in a room. They all went to the den. And so they were out there and Joe and, you know, was hanging out with them, calming them down or whatever. Um, <clears throat> Beatrice, the next day, said she didn't sleep for two days. The next day, she said she was just like a zombie. <clears throat> and when she talked to her uncle, who was in town, her aunt and uncle were in town temporarily. They had come in from, uh, I think, Colorado. And she said that uh, they were talking, and her uncle told her a story, which was kind of interesting. And I'll throw that one in there. He was outside of Colorado Springs. He was driving. And he said, dude, I I was, you know, this was when he was young. And he said, I was looking at my phone, you know, it was like 2009 or something like that. And he's not, he's not like my age or anything. But um, he was looking at his phone and he said, dude, and I look up and at the last minute I see this thing running across the road and I slam on my brakes and I go to swerve and I think I'm going to hit it. And then he goes at the last second, he goes, it's a black furry creature on four legs He's like, it stands up and it puts its hands up and it's like, it's like, it wasn't even afraid. It was like, it was staring at me like, go ahead, hit me. He goes and it opened its mouth unnaturally wide. Its face was more brown than the, the rest of the body it was more black. And he said, I felt like, like a pressure, like I hit something like pressure, you know, but I went through it. He goes, and then my car spun around in circles. He goes, and then I see this thing running across the road into a ditch and he goes and then like it just goes off into the darkness and disappears and i'm thinking what the hell just happened to me so she he tells her this story she's like and it scared the crap out of me she's like and she's like i told them about what happened with the ouija board 
She's like, so that night, this was the second night after she had, had the, the thing happen where she went unconscious. She fainted, you know, from fear. She goes to bed. She has a nightmare. The first of many. She'd been up for two days, right? She goes to bed. She has this freaking nightmare. And she wakes up and there's this thing standing in the doorway. And the creepy thing is she said that it did this. Like, like it knocked like three times. Like somebody would knock with their finger. Yeah. Like to wake you up. And she's like, I wake up and I see it standing there. And she's like, and it just kind of jogged into the room. And then it. This part sounds kind of funny, folks, and I'm not trying to be silly or funny, but this is what I was told, so just bear with me. She said it kind of did a little jig, like a little dance. Like it was moving its legs up and down, you know? That doesn't sound funny at all. That would that, that, yeah. that, that, that makes it even worse. Honest, yeah. But she said when she was when she was looking at it, she could see this like weird, like what she said was like dust or something coming off the bottoms of its feet. And she's like, I could kind of see through it. She's like, and then it was starting, I realized what it was doing. It was becoming more. More physical. Physical, yeah. yeah. And then it just kind of was lifting up its arms and she goes, then I could see breathing, like it was being brought into our world, you know? And she's like, then it stared at me. She's like, and then it began to just slowly, one step at a time, just walk around my side of the bed. And she's like, and at that point, I just like, I went back to sleep, which later I think she realized she was going unconscious again. And she woke up and it was morning. So she was completely freaked out. This whole thing happened. She said it only took like a matter of minutes and it was a terrifying incident. But she goes, to me, what it signified to me was like the opening salvo to something that was going to be horrific in her life. And it was, this isn't something that she likes to talk about. It did take me about two weeks altogether of three or four different conversations to get all this gathered. Because she was so, when we would talk, and it's no offense to you uh, if you're listening, but she, she was very, um, she couldn't put it all together. You know what I mean? I had to piece it together, which I'm good at doing. That's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but she was very not able to just, you know, run it together. She would tell me this story and then that story was all over the place. And then she would start to become emotionally upset you know, and then stop. And then I'd say, look, we'll talk again, you know? And then her boyfriend helped her out some too. Really nice guy. Um, you know, but one of the, one of the scariest things that happened and I'll jump ahead here and I'll just get right to it. They went out drinking down at, at the square, which is in San Marcos. It's the square, you know, where Arash's bar is. Yeah. He's got a bar there called the rail yard. It's right there, you know, off of the square. There's an alley right there. Right. And she said that, you know, their zip code is literally 78666 in mm -hmm. San Marcos. It is. And they're totally proud. It's so weird. They're so proud of it, dude. They, they, they think it's, there's all this devil crap there. You know, I think it's cool or something. And in that alley, she's, we were walking back to our vehicle and it's right there by RS's bar where this happened. And she said that they were walking behind literally where the rail yard is right there in that alley. And they have a, a big, she's like, I know it was a big spray paint. I knew that's where it was at because she said it, that there's a big spray paint with like a devil. I don't know if it's still there, but it was there for years. It was like, it was like the, the zip code. And our ass has talked about that with these, these weird people that are, they think it's cool. They wear these shirts with all that crap on it, you know, but uh, whatever. And, and so, you know, the, the, they, they were walking through the alley and he, her boyfriend, guys are guys. He stopped to take a leak, you know, on, on the wall um, you know, sorry about that, but that's what he did. Not to be tell you what happened. And so he, she, he, he turns, he looks and he sees something. He says, I think we're being followed. And she's like, Oh no, there'd been a couple people had been mugged or, or drugged and whatever, uh, with, you know, things that happened. So she was thinking, Oh, people, you know, but always in the back of her mind or something, you know? So she said, what is it? What is it? A, and she was hoping that it was a person. And he says, no, it looks like a, and she had not been telling him what was going on up to that point, just very basic. All he knew about was the Ouija board incident. And at that point, because that was when she was a kid, right? Now, like I said, I'm jumping ahead here. She's in her 20s now, right? So he says, you know, he knew about the Ouija board incident and some stuff that had happened to her when she was a, a child or whatever, or a, a, a young adult, teenager, whatever. And he said, no, it looks like a, like a, like an animal or something. She turns and she looks and they're almost to her, the, the car, and, and she's standing there and she's like, 
what is that? And she says it comes out from behind a trash can. And she says it had like took two steps, three steps, whatever. And it had a paw up. Like it was like you could see it. She's like, and it was like, it was almost showing me. She's like, it was on four legs. And then I realized that the shoulders didn't look right. They were too, they're spread too far apart. And this was an arm. More like an arm than a leg with fur. And she saw a hand and she said the hand looked like you could see it like a human like hand, but with weird little pudgy like fingers, you know, and she's like, I could see it clearly. It was about 20 yards away. She's like, but I could see it. Or, or she, I think she said it was, uh, yeah, about 20 yards away. Now, having gone to that spot, I think she was off on her distance. I think that she was only about 10 to 15 yards away. But she I said, if you had to estimate yards, you know, and she goes, I'm not real good with yards. I said, well, think of football. You know, and then he was there in the background, her boyfriend, and they, they both kind of said maybe 15, 20 yards. And I said, if you had to say 15 or 20, say 20. Well, when I went over there and I looked at that spot, I remember thinking, this isn't that far. I think it was probably closer. I think they're miss, you know, I think they missed the mark. I think it was closer than they thought. And this creature was there and it was very large. And then it just pops right up, boom, 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 boom. I say boom, 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 because that's what it did. It was like pop, pop, pop. You know, we've heard this before. Yeah. This thing stands up and then it's like on its hind legs and then it just kind of goes, or it growls. And then they're just like terrified and they go run to the car. And I'm telling you, there's something to this because we have heard this so many times, like the people by the lake who told us this story. Uh, they go to push the little deal and nothing happens. It's like the battery is dead. So they sit there trying to do it. So then she's like, I had almost forgotten that I could stick a key in the car, you know, to open it because, you know, so a lot of us it. don't even use like keys anymore. We just have fobs. And what happens if that fob, because think about it, man, if you don't have a key, they can actually open the door when all you have is a fob and these things can manipulate electromagnetic energy, you know, like a ghost or something. Um, what are you going to do? Because it, it, she couldn't get in. And she's like, what do we do? And her boyfriend's like, use the key, <laughs> you know? So he, she's fumbling for it and dropping it. And she's like, it was like a movie, you know, it was like Keystone Capers, I, I'm, my words, not hers. Um, and then she, she puts the key and then gets, she gets in the car and then this thing goes right up to the freaking car and is like kind of looking around both ways and made sure nobody was around and then put its hands on the window and began to stare at her and it didn't slap on the car and, and try to, and try, didn't try to get into it. It just kind of was staring at her and then it jumped down like if a dog would have jumped, you know, and then kind of ran back into the alley. They pull out they, and then the, uh, there's a car pull, like pulling out at the same time, like from the other side and they almost hit it and they were just like, they, they were just in shock. So they, the car behind them didn't back up to let them back up and go. They had to go the direction that this thing went. So that oh, was even man. scarier. And so the guy was like, can you back up? And they all, he, the, the lady, the girl behind him, she's. She's a college age girl and she's, you know, she's like, screw you, man. You know, like whatever. So they're not going to argue. And he's just like, he drives and tries to back up and then can't. So he just says, screw it. We got to go through the alley. So they go through the alley and this thing is right there at the end of the street because it was blocked off on the other side. So they had to go out that way. And when, it, when they went down the alley, this thing was standing right there at the end of the street. And then it just walks behind the building and they just tried to gun it and drive real fast. And they almost got T-boned by somebody else who was leaving the square. And there, there were people everywhere at this point and they were standing right there, but nobody was acting like they noticed it, which is weird. And then the thing went around behind the building and they, when they got through, they looked both ways. They didn't see it and they took off. They're almost to her place. Okay which is on the west side of San, San Marcos. And he's like, is there something you want to tell me? Because <laughs> this sounds a lot like the Ouija board creature, you know? And she's like, okay, okay. And now she lived with a couple girls. They were all roommates. When they get back to the house, they all were there. They had just gotten home too. A couple of them were, bar well, they were bartenders. And they started, you know, telling him that she was having nightmares and that she was sleepwalking. So he asked her, he said, and we'll call him Raymond, um, because he he did not, I didn't even ask, I don't know if I had permission to say his name, but Beatrice was very adamant that, that she didn't want Raymond knowing all this stuff, and Raymond was like, look, you need to tell me this, 
And I thought this was really interesting because they're they, they were they went to dinner uh, the next night, and it's kind of funny because we like to go to this place, the New Braunfels. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's Alpine House. It's, yeah. a, it's a German restaurant. Folks, if you like German food, I mean, it is an epic place. It's Alpine House in New Braunfels. So he says, we, we go out to dinner. And this is what he told me. He said, we go out to dinner, and we're headed to New Braunfels. He goes, and <laughs> weird thing, he's like, I had not heard your show. She goes, you need to check out this guy's show. He, he knows my uncles and my family and, every, and my, my stepdad and everybody. And so he turns it on and there's an episode on and he goes, he goes, no BS, dude. I hear your voice. First time I listened to your show and he's like, and you're talking about a dog man and a homeless guy in New Braunfels. <laughs> and I'm like, we're almost to New Braunfels and I'm going like, what? Like, it's so weird. Like he said that that was the weirdest thing. And he said, dude. And then he, after that, she's like, you need to listen to this guy. He talks about these creatures, you know, and he, he does a lot of work or whatever. And he's interviewed all my family. This guy goes like, wow, that's that's crazy. You know, like he goes, so we go to eat at Alpine Haas, which I had actually recommended that when Joe had asked me about a place to go eat. You know, I said, if you're coming back from San Antonio, man, because, you know, he knew about Pico de Gallo in San Antonio, which was interesting because at that time, Joe and me, I was interviewing him for the show. And he said, I'm coming back from San Antonio, man. We were, he was driving, we were talking. And you could tell he was driving. I said, if you're in New Braunfels, if you're almost there, go, go to Alpine House. It's really good. It's German food. And he so he's hooked. So he took an, an Helica there with the whole family and then his stepson and, and they all went and his kid and they loved it. So then she's like, I'm going to take Raymond there, you know? And so that became kind of their spot and they would go out to green too. Now green, that's a whole nother story I'm going to tell you about. We'll get to that in a minute. But he said, we're out there, we're going to Alpine House and that, that comes on, which I thought was really weird. No coincidences here, right? Here's another creepy thing. He said, we had dinner. Everything went off that hitch, went for a little drive. We, we, we go back. We go back to her place. He goes, and, and, and I wake up in the middle of the night. He goes, and your show is on. He goes, and I didn't turn it on. He's like, and I look over in the corner of the room and I see something. And he goes, and, and there was a guy on there talking about uh, and I know what he's talking about. He said it was a supernatural episode. It was an episode about uh, uh, Arturo you know, when he had the witches or whatever. Yeah. And, and, or whatever it was he saw, the, the the werewolves, witches, whatever they were. And if you could go back in the archives and find that one, folks, I don't know what episode that is. And he said that he just hears like something walk like, and have you ever heard like a dog walk with nails on, on a hardwood floor? And I said, yeah, I got dogs that, that and they, I know what it sounds like. And he said, dude, I heard that. And then I heard click. And it was like, it was turning off the TV. It was coming, it was on the TV on YouTube. Uh huh. And he said he turned it off. It was on that episode where they was talking about these werewolves. And he said, dude, it was creepy. It was like that thing stopped you from when you started speaking, it stopped you. Click. And then he said, I, I, I thought I was dreaming. He goes, I kept rubbing my eyes. And he goes, and I didn't know what to do. And he goes, and I reached over, and I always carry a rosary in my pocket. So he's, I reached over, and my Thea gave it to me a long time ago before she died. And he grabs it, and he's like, in the name of Jesus, get away from me. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And he said that this thing just made like a quick, like, rah, like a, like, just real quick. Like it was trying to start a roar, but it just got the very first part out. And then it was like, he said it went down, like into the ground. Like he thought it was weird. And so he, he said, I st sat there the whole night. He goes, I tried shaking Beatrice awake. And he goes, and she wouldn't wake up. He goes, I turned the light on. I freaked out. He goes, I thought maybe I was hallucinating. He goes, I thought maybe I was hallucinating when I saw that thing. He goes, I thought I was going crazy. And he said, of all things, he goes and he drinks a glass of milk and he starts doing jumping jacks, you know, to try to, he goes, I'm trying to clear my mind here, you know? And uh, I knew she was okay. She was asleep. She kind of was like, uh, you know, she didn't wake up. He's like, morning comes. She wakes up. She's like, are you okay? And he goes, no, I'm not okay. No. A freaking wolf, werewolf looking creature. He said they look distinctly different though than the one they saw by the square. When they compared notes, that creature that they saw over there by our ashes bar in San Marcos and then, the, and then the creature that she saw when she was a kid or teenager, young, young teenager, young adult, that creature and then when they compared notes with this other thing, they were all three different things. 
They look distinctly different. Like they were all the same, you know, but they, they look different. Like each one of them had their own distinct look. So when you compared the notes or whatever, and which I did, I thought, this is weird. Now, this is what happened. They went to green, you know, green. And they went out there and there was a country music uh, thing going on out there or whatever. And they, they had music, which is, green's a really cool place, folks. You ever come to Austin area? It's in between here. What is it? Between San Marcos and the Bronvilles? Yeah. A really beautiful place. A really beautiful place. But it's all part of this, you know, as Aaron Deese would say, the Dogman Triangle. It's all there. It's all in, It's all part of it, you know. And so there's a lot of weird stuff that comes out of this area. You, you, you go down that riverfront drive, and of course, there's people who've claimed to have seen werewolves and Bigfoot and ghosts, all kinds of crap out there. I mean, it's just crazy. And then you you get stories from from you know the Devil's Backbone, you know. So. What's really crazy is they go and they have this um, little get together, whatever, a, a couple's like a double, double, what's called double dating. They have a couple's, you know, day, whatever. And they had their friends came and, and they went out to the, to the, I forgot the dance hall out there. It's got this green dance hall, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah and, and it's just called green called. dance hall. Yeah. So same with the chicken fries. Steak, of, right? Yeah. And that, that, that place is called the grist mill uh -huh. on the green. Yeah. Grish Mill and Green is a really good place to eat, folks. But th th and there's a really cool, really cool antique store there. Uh, place that they used to be, they had, they sold soap, I think, and another place that had like chocolate. It's, it's it's like a really cool town that's like modernized in an older setting. I don't it's know, Germanic. It's, it's, it's like very they feel cool. like they took some the past and just brought it forward. But mm -hmm. it's just it's very cool and rustic, and yeah, definitely go check it out. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful too. When you go out there, that old buildings out there. Mm -hmm. it's really, so they were out there and they had a good night. And at the end, at the end of the night, they decided to drive back through the the back roads or whatever. The couple that they lived in San Marcos in the west side of San Marcos, and they were going to drive back that way and drop them off. They get to the one point. I know you guys know where this is at, where the bridge. It's like if if it rains real heavy, that water will go over that bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's on either side. People go tubing, whatever. Mm, I know you're about. Yeah, and when they get to that point, they see something like 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 it's popping its head up on the side where that water flows through it. You know, and it was like they were like, "What is that?" And then it just kind of crawls and jumps over the the railing, and it's just standing there. And they all four w look over to the right and they see this black. Eight foot tall werewolf looking creature with with big shoulders and it just looked massive and it looked just evil. Its eyes were red and they were like, What is that? And it kind of went forward in front of their vehicle, making them to to swerve, but there was really is not a lot of room on that two lane, you know, to swerve because mm -hmm. you're gonna go off in the water. And so it just kind then it kind of steps back and jumps over the over the railing back into the water. Like, you know, and they were like, What the heck was that? So they kept going and they're all starting to panic, whatever. The, 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 the couple they were with was freaking out. And Beatrice is just kind of sitting there like, yeah, this is keeps happening. This is not like an isolated incident. And they were confused, the couple they were with at Raymond and her just kind of going like, oh, crap. But kind of at this point being used to it, you know. And uh, that was the only thing uh, other than that. That was the last thing that ever happened to Raymond because he didn't – he refused to uh, – I get how do you say it? take part in it? He's just like he quit going out with her, and then ultimately they broke up. And then they recently got back together, which is when we were talking. And I'm happy to say that that actually this me me interviewing them and talking to them maybe have gotten them back together because they had stopped talking for a while. And when I had asked her if she could get in touch with him so that I could speak to him, she said, "Yeah, I can call him." And then they kind of reconnected, and then you know they they were talking, and they were actually the outlet mall. We were on the phone and they were at the food court <laughs> thingy, whatever. Yeah, they were together. Oh, yeah. cool. And they were talking. So I was like talking to him. And um, he, he another thing that happened, she was um, driving down a back country road, whatever, to go to a friend's house. And she said, it took everything in me to get the courage up to do it. And she's like, and I sure enough, I knew something was going to, I just knew something was going to happen. But here's what's weird. It didn't happen the way you think it would. She gets to the friend's house and the, the, the friend and the mother are outside uh, they live outside of San Marcos, out in the country, and uh, they were getting ready to go to uh, Driftwood. What's it called? Uh, Salt, uh, Salt, Salt Lake. Lake yeah. Salt Lake, yeah. They are ready to go eat dinner over Salt Lake because they had like a, a, a get-together going on, like an after uh, dinner for like a kitchen yet or something they had. 
And she's like, we're, we're getting ready to go. We're all going to go meet over there. And, and everybody had gone home and changed or whatever. And she's like, I was dreading having to just take that drive. She says, we get there and they're outside and they're, and they're talking with this guy who I guess, you know, was somebody that they had hired or something. And he was a maintenance lawn guy, whatever. And he had come back to get his stuff. And she, the, the lady told him, yeah, I guess go ahead. We're, we're kind of in a hurry, you know? And so they were kind of perturbed. And when they eventually, when the, when the guy goes and gets his stuff, loads it up with his friend or his brother, whatever, they leave. The mother of this friend of, of Beatrice's tells her, she's like, I don't know what this guy's deal is, man. They, they claim that they saw something up in a tree and they got scared. She's like, they're all superstitious, you know? And uh, her friend, who's half Hispanic, because the mom is, is her mom's white and dad's Hispanic, kind of, kind of like me, but the opposite. And she said, they believe in Lachusa, mom. That's why they were scared. She goes, well, I don't believe in Lachusa or any of this other stuff. She made a joke. Like, she was like, I don't believe in Lachusa. I don't believe in, in, in La Chancla. I don't believe in Chalupa. Whatever. And while she's talking all this mess, they're driving and they're in her car now and they're heading to Driftwood. They see this thing come flying out of a, from a tree and go from one tree to the other. And they said it looked just like a Lachusa. I was going to say, you better be careful talking like that. Because that, and her mom was saying that, see? Now, I don't have a lot of stories where people say that and where it happens immediately. You know what I mean? Where something grabs a hold of them real quick, you know? But that was one in particular. Now, my cousin on my dad's side, who's actually white, he saw a Latusa when he was young. Uh, Trey talked about it on my show. Uh, I think it was Indian Horror Story Reservation, Reservations Horror Story, something like that. But this thing goes swooping from one side to the other of the road. And she said it looked like, like a woman with a big nose, not a beak, like a woman's face with feathers. And she was sitting there looking at this and she was like, what in the, and the, and her friend, I, I think her name was, I think her name was Ashley. I'm not hundred percent sure. It, it doesn't matter. But she, she was like, and, I, and she said that she, her, she goes, my friend said you could use her name. She didn't care. But I, th I think it was Ashley or something like that. And she was like, mom, mom, shut up. And she's like, what is that? And the mom's like freaking out. She's like, what is that? And then they were all like, it's Lachusa, you know? And they saw it like just straight on, whatever. And she says, I thought that, that it was connected to me. She's like, but, but then again, these workers had seen it at Already. those people's prop. Yeah. So then she asked me, and, and was, I guess a very important question, and it was to, to, to frame it for people to understand this stuff. It, it's like, it's like Ken Gerhardt said on our show when he was on the live stream, we can't, it's something we can't comprehend. You know what I'm saying? Like, remember yeah. how you said that about Bigfoot? It's just like, it's something we can't really understand. Bigfoot, Dogman, Latusa, whatever, all this stuff we can't really comprehend. We don't know. And this stuff is like one step ahead of our human brains. We're, we're bound by the capacity of our brain. We're kind of in this shell, that's, which is your housing of your soul. And, and we're not out in the spirit. We're not seeing it through the spiritual eyes, typically. Yeah, we're um, only three-dimensional. Well, I mean, yeah. you can't play football if you don't know the rules. It's just plain and simple. I mean, I don't think like that we're technically behind. It's just that we don't have any understanding. And so because of that, you're not really on – you're just inherently not on the same playing field until you do. So We're all on a different wavelength than they are. I mean, yeah. I think it, it really is like vibration and the substance that they are is not us. You know, it's just – it's something else. Now, here's another interesting thing. One of the things that she witnessed, and that, that was that, they went and the rest of the night went off without a hitch, but they always talk about what they saw, uh, this Lachusa, you know. But and she asked me a very, very important question, and I think it's very pivotal, pivotal to, to people's thinking. I think it's going to, you know, it's going to make, you know, you have to decide for yourself. But is it connected, she said, and I said, I absolutely think it is. The fact that it happened the day before could have been like, well, you know, these things, according to legends from Arabic and Jewish sources that we've gotten from the Middle East and the Levant, you know, uh, different types of Christians like Coptic Christians, Gnostic Christians, Orthodox Christians, they all have these different views on these different types of demons and things like that. But they all agree that they move very quickly. 
So I told her, I said, look at it like this. This thing may have known, had, had, you know, known, had knowledge of you going to be there. So it did what it did, you know, in advance so that you could, and then you witnessed what it, you saw. That is kind of stretching it, kind of, but not really, because we've, we've heard of some really crazy things that these things can do. So it makes you wonder if that could have been what happened or is it something like, like, how do you say it? Like, like it's just a shapeshifter all the way around. You know what I mean? And maybe the, the people before just saw an owl and were scared. They were superstitious, you know? And I mean, we've been on a job site where the, their workers were saying there was a lechusa and it was just an owl. Now, whether shapeshifter or not, I don't know. It was Brackenridge. You know, it was like, you said they're going like, okay, it's an owl. Okay, y'all are being, y'all are freaking out, you know? And uh, then they start throwing rocks at it. And I was like, dude, it's just an owl. Like, stop, you know? Whatever. Well, I mean, it, it could also be that, you know, we always say that once you experience something, when you gaze into the abyss, the abyss gazes back in, at you. It could be something to where, like, you know, it's not that they're inherently searching her out, but she's like a homing beacon. So like homing beacon, yeah. Yeah. So like anything that is in the area is going to be like recognize her as like, oh, she's in tune to, she can see me. Or, or she so has, manifested. Yeah, yeah. So it manifested itself in front of her. And, you know, the, the workers earlier, they could just, the fact that they believe and they're so superstitious, it could lead credence to be like, it's already in the area. If you don't really care about it, like you might not pay enough attention to notice it. But if you're driving down a creepy road and you also are superstitious, you're going to be look on the lookout. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're looking up in trees and you see a white flash, you would be like, that's Lachusa. And then, you know, like I said, it might just be that it was just drawn to her because of the fact that she already is an experiencer. Or or here's another scenario that she saw it because she, her eye was opened, Mm -hmm. you know, and and, and it just was there and it's, and then it didn't like the mom mocking it. Yeah. So it it showed itself. Uh, It could be one of those, you know, um speak of the devil moments you know it's just like and it, you literally called it into being and well, it looks like a it, harpy yeah you know which just to me it could be a cryptid or a spirit or anything I mean, who knows i mean it, it's just one of those weird things where something like that that moves so weirdly between the trees it, you don't know the physiological makeup of that being so it could be some weird underground, you know, inner earth creature that kind of dwells in that area and just comes up every once in a while, or it could be a spirit, that or a shapeshifter, or a shapeshifter, person. Who a knows person. what? I mean, it could be. Yeah. You know, we know that there's multiple choice here, and, and you know, the thing is, is that you know, it's one of those weird descriptions too that kind of leads credence to a lot of other things. It could be a lechusa, like we said, or it could be a, a bird person that like kind of was putting on a more human form because you said it had feathers on it and stuff. So like, it leads me to believe like, Oh, what the heck is that? And it, it, I don't know. It just throws you for a loop. I guess it does. It, it really does. It throws you a curve. And, and you know, when you, when you look into the stories and we talked about this, I think it was on the live stream where we talked about uh, Jerry's wife, having seen the black goat man looking creature over the, by purgatory road mm-hmm. or on purgatory road where multiple people have claimed to have seen it, including Scorpion's old boss. Um, you know, when you, you hear those stories, you know, and then you hear about this black hellhound dog thing that comes running out of the cemetery at, at people, you know, <sighs> is it the same thing with different forms or are they just all part of the same club or maybe they don't, they don't, they're not part of the same club and they're just all different, but you see them. Cause like you said, Tony, you see one, you see them all. And we, it, I mean, this is way out there. I mean, I, I don't personally believe this, but it could be that, you know, that from the very first incident, it's the same creature. It could be that when they first were playing with the Ouija board um, and they asked specifically, like, show me what I, what my father saw or what Joe saw. And they were like, okay, I'm not that thing, but I can, I guess I'll try to make myself look like it so you can see it because that gives me permission to enter this and show you directly. You're literally asking for me. So, like, it wasn't that thing specifically, but it was just hanging. It got drawn by the Ouija board. And then when it was asked that question, it was like, okay, I'll show you. But because of that, it can, like, turn into different forms and is is messing with her because she was so in tune with it or in so in tune with that 
kind of like she was on a, a vibration that kind of like was able to sense it better. So it might be like that, that that creature is a shapeshifter of some sort, but not of a physical sort, but more of like a, a spiritual sort where it just adopts different forms. And because of the fact that she requested or, or um, uh, uh, Joe's the daughter requested specifically to see that thing that it was showing itself as that more. Because like, you know, the, the bottom half being kind of smoky kind of leads me to believe that it didn't like fully transform into whatever it was trying mm-hmm. to transform into. Or no, if, and, and and definitely Joe's incident involved a creature that looked like a werewolf. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like it, 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 it just feels like it was like trying to show like the upper half and be like, you you get the you get the idea, you know? Yeah. Like it was being lazy or something. Or it, like it couldn't it couldn't do it or something. Or could just be that creature. It, uh, who knows, really? I mean, it could just be that creature. I mean, and it's just showing you, hey, here I am. You conjured me. You wanted it. You got it. Um, Speak of the devil moment. Yeah. It, just, it makes me do. wonder, though, like, what what reason would they have to consistently take a physical form and manifest themselves in our three-dimensional world? Because if these are beings that spend most of their lives, like, on a higher vibrational plane or, or in a higher dimension, you would think that being in our world will be a downgrade for them. Well, so there there has to be... They're like gods here, dude. There has to be some yeah. kind of benefit. Like well, I just the, said, they're like gods It here. could be the opposite, though. Think of it like this. Have you ever played a game with every cheat enabled? It's yeah. absolutely boring. Mm-hmm. You, you play it for a little bit, but you get tired of it. And if you have an existence that spans who knows, it could be a thousand years, it could be who, who however many... Going and being able to enter our world in, in a physical being and like experience it like how we do might be something that, that 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 in itself might be what they're craving and like you know feeding on our fear might just sustain the fear them. is what I think I think yeah. it totally is that but so it might think- not be like that they need the fear it might just be like oh I get fear I sustain my physical form and over time I become more physical and I'm able to stay here longer. So you think that they want that they want the limitations of the, of of a three dimensional world because their theirs is just yeah it, I mean, not who, fulfilling. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it just might be that you know boredom. It just might be like you know it, like I'm I'm tired of knowing everything. I'm tired of having to deal with the same. Like yeah. everybody around me is on the same playing field as me. I would like to enter this world with a on a higher starting point, but still kind of not as omnipotent and not as all knowing and not as you know, as a spiritual. Well, I don't think they're strong. omnipotent. I don't think they're actually yeah. gods with the oh, big no, G. I think not. they're like they, to uh, us. To they, they to us, us, I yeah, guess. like our ancestors probably looked at them as gods yeah. with a little G. I don't know necessarily that they choose to manifest themselves to specific people. I think uh, they're just kind of like riding like like an energy wave. Like okay, if, if you're a surfer, you know, like you don't you're, you're you're just out there on the ocean and you don't create the waves. Right, you you wait for one to come, and then you ride it, and and while you're riding it, you're having fun, you're enjoying it, you feel more alive, you you get that rush as you're riding that wave. But it's something that you have to find your opportunity and take yeah, it. Yeah, they're they're opportunists. Know? I feel. Yeah. Like, yeah. So so like maybe they they don't necessarily manifest themselves to specific people. They just they just kind of take an opportunity to to ride specific energies that will allow them to manifest in this in this world. I think it's a little bit of A, a little bit of B. I think like they do choose specifics. I think like if you do have an ability to see the spirit world or you have an ability to be more in tune with it, they'll actively go after you. And I think like they don't really go after people that don't see or like that don't have that because why would you? Why would you try to turn a non-believer into a believer unless it was accidental? Because the more people that don't believe in you, the better because then you're more in the shadows and the fear grows to the people that do believe in you strongly. So you, you, you like in, you impact this huge fear because everyone around them is always like, Oh, you're crazy. Those things don't exist. And then this thing shows up right in front of you. You're going to be like, what the heck am I seeing? This is terrifying. No one believes in me. No one believes that I can see this thing. And it, it's scaring the crap out of me because I know I do. So it could be something like that. Yeah. So, what ended up happening? Let's get back to the a yeah, couple, yeah, couple more incidents to cover here. 
uh, to bring you up to speed, now let, let's fill in the gap what happened by the time, time she was a teenager and into the, in the, the, the years that she went through and became an adult. Um, I'm trying to remember what exactly. I think, I think she was the second oldest at that party. Anyway, I don't know how long ago that was, but anyways, what happened was she eventually, they, they took her to a, uh, a medicine woman who was native American and she lived down there on the border and she was a Yatki Indian and they took her down there and they introduced her to this woman and they took her and she, she, they went across the border and they ended up, I think, I think it was in, uh, I think it was an Eagle Pass, pretty sure. And uh, so anyway, they, they went down there and they were talking to her and they had like told her, you know, that she had this entity or whatever that was following her. But this medicine woman told her, it's not just one. She's like, you have multiple entities that are following you. And they're all kind of working together. And so this is what she was told by this particular person. Now, I don't condone people going and doing stuff like that, whatever. But, uh, you know, they, they did what they did. It is what it is. And she said that one of the things that this witch lady told her, you know, was that she needed to uh, basically have to do all these different weird things. Like she had to bathe seven times and just gave her a little chore. Like, I don't remember all of it, like a laundry list of things. Well, she did these things and it didn't stop. It didn't do anything, but she did get a little bit of clarity from this woman because she said that there were multiple entities that were plaguing her. And she said that they weren't all friends. They were working together in the way that they were all feeding off of her, but they weren't all friends. And she said, you could probably get them to hurt each other. You know what I mean? Um, and now when she witnessed this one entity, she said it was the most terrifying of all of the ones she saw. And this is the, the, the main one she saw one time. And she said that she had gone with her dad to Cabela's over there in, in Buda. And they were, they, they were leaving and she sees something moving around the ground that she's like, you never seen like a shark in the water. That moves. She said she saw a shadow moving around the parking lot like that. She's like, "What is that?" And so they 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 get they go in the vehicle, whatever. And they leave, and she's thinking, "Man, I'm seeing things," you know. Um, and she's like, "This was when she was a teenager, like the first, like 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 maybe the second thing she saw after the original Ouija board incident." And I think that, that it's also important to note that she's the one that went unconscious. Nobody else did. So when she went unconscious. Something I think maybe was able to graft itself to her, you know what I mean? And I think that was a big part of it. And she said that that, that was one of the first things she saw was that big shadow. She said she saw, like this. This is the second thing she saw. She was at at her ma, at her grandmother's house, and her her grandma was like watching her and her younger sister, and they had gone to to play bingo, whatever. Her her uh, mom and dad, and so she was there. And the grandmother was asleep. She goes, we, we'd sneak out and take my grandma's car, you know, but we, we knew that eventually my stepdad and my mom were going to be home and pick us up about midnight. So we, we, we knew about what time they come home. So my grandma would go to bed at eight o'clock. She's like, she watches Wheel of Fortune, whatever, eats her food. And then she's like, good night. And she's like, okay, Wilita, good night. You know, and then they go and they do whatever they do. She says, so my Wilita goes to sleep. She's like, I'm like, we're going to sneak the keys, right? She's like, we go and we're walking to her bedroom and she's like, me and my younger sister, we see this big, tall, shadowy thing. And she said that the way she described it was horrifying. She said it had like horns you could see and red eyes. And she said that it was very big, very tall, and it had these wings that you could see kind of moving around on its back, but it was all black. It was like black, black, black to the, like to the point of- Ink. Yeah, like inky black. There's nothing, there's like no light, you know what I mean? That was like, it wasn't- you could penetrate it. It wasn't a shadow. And she said that she was like, it was like looking like a shadow. It was, you couldn't see through it, but it was just black. And she said, you could see the red eyes and you could see them blinking even. And she said, you could see it like moving around. You could see hands and everything else. And she said that when they saw this thing, the weird thing was that it was like, like there was like, she's like, have you ever seen a lava lamp like flow? This is what she said. 
I said, yeah. And she said, well, when you see the, the arms and the legs just kind of like wavy, moving around like the lava lamp going just, but kept like it was going down. It wasn't going up and down. It was just going down. And she said, and I saw this and then when it moved, it was like vibrating, like it would shake, you know? And she said that it sounded like a cicada, you know, in the summertime here, which, you know, there's yeah, a we bunch all know. of you hear them. <laughs> yeah. And she said it was like that noise. She said it sounded like, like almost like a rattlesnake or a cicada, you know, shaking. And she said that it was also making a hissing noise. And she saw this like thing kind of whip around underneath it. She knew it was a tail. And she said, I don't know what this thing was, but she goes, it was horrifying. And she said that it took two steps toward us because at that point it looked almost two dimensional, but then it became more three dimensional and it was like, boom, boom. And she could feel the, the, the thing shake the ground. And so they run back into their grandma's room and they wake the grandma up and they tell her what's going on. Grandma had never had anything like this happen. So she's lighting candles, saying the rosary, doing all this stuff. And they were terrified and they told, they even told her what they were doing. They were like, look, we were trying to steal your car to go drive around or whatever. They want to go to Taco Bell or some, some crap. And, uh, you know, kids that age, they'd rather eat Taco Bell than their mom, their bolitas, actual good food. Yeah. One of the great mysteries of our time. Yeah. And then when bolitas gone, then they're like, oh, I miss my grandma's cooking. Yeah. When you were young, you wanted to eat garbage, but, uh, it happens all the time, you know, but it's crazy. That that was the that was the, the the one that scared her the most of all these creatures, of all these entities, whatever. But she felt like she was never going to get away from these things. Now here's the the other the only other incident that happened to her. She was on a, a walking uh, in, in residential area. It was like a little trail, and she's like, there was it was kind of weird. There wasn't anything going on. She's like, she was on the phone talking, just walking her dog, and her best friend was walking with her, and they were both having a conversation. They had her own speaker. They were talking to their other friend. This is actually the other girl who didn't give her name. Uh, we'll call her Denise. She was there during the Ouija board incident. And they're walking along. And the weird thing, they see a snake co- coiled up. And then it just jumps. Like, like literally, she's like, it lunges and goes across the, the path real fast. And she's like, whoa. And they kind of back up and they just let it go. And then it slithered off into the brush. And she's like, and then we look up. And we see this creature, and the way she described it was like the Bigfoot type creature with a snout. And she said that it was hunched down, but it was like watching something. It was like looking over this rock. And she's like, the way she described the head looked like that Bigfoot type creature that we've heard of, like the different stories from different places that looks like a gug, what they call a gugwe. And when she started describing it, I was like, oh, that's weird. And she said that it, that that too looked almost like a vibration. And she's like, it was weird. It was like it was there. And then it started to kind of crawl out from behind the rock, but it wasn't looking in their direction at all. And she thought that the, that was weird that they saw that snake. And then when they just kind of looked and they both looked up and they saw that, she thought that's not normal. There's something there. And then that thing just kind of crawled away. And then she said that she noticed there was a woman on, that was walking three dogs. And she thinks that that thing was looking at her. And so they both saw it. And then she compared notes with her friend who had a little bit of stuff happen to her. Um, one of the, the, the incidents, it was all little stuff, but one of the most, I think, important incidents that happened to her friend, Denise, who was there during the incident, was that <laughs> this, this, this one was really creepy. You know how people have cabinets above their toilet and stuff like that? You know, so she was going up there to grab like some wipes, you know, those, the, the, to, to refill or something that she had to refill. She was telling me to refill in the bathroom. And she's like, my mom told me to clean the bathroom, and, I, and that entails everything, not just messing around, you know, put fresh toilet paper, put a towel, that you know, do all behind this. Behind the toilet. Yeah, uh, everything. So she's like, I'm putting it, I'm, I'm refilling the uh, wipes. And she's like, and I'm sitting there, and uh, I, I'm, I'm on the phone talking to my friend Amber, Amber, who's the other girl. And she's like, and I put my hand up on the cabinet, and, I, and something grabbed my hand, and she looks up, and she sees this hairy furry looking like nasty looking hand and it starts pulling her into the cabinet and she said i yanked back and I, she's like i threw my phone like my phone dropped and she's like and and i fell backwards and i i was sitting up against the wall and my foot was in the toilet she goes i don't even know how that happened she was like i was just like look down and i'm like you know my crock is like in the toilet with my foot and she's like and i just jumped back and i was like i don't know how this happened uh, but i was just shocked and she was like what did i just see 
everything else that happened to her was like kind of minor compared to what went on with, with Beatrice. And so I was like, I asked her, I was like, did you feel this sense of dread, you know, like Beatrice kept describing when she was having these incidents? And she said, yeah, I felt it all the time. Like there was something around, but I couldn't see it, you know? Um, and that's kind of what her friend Amber had said too, the same thing. Um, but this this girl doesn't didn't want her name being told, whatever. She's very, you know. So we just kind of gave them whatever. Um, but yeah, that that's pretty much the story. And uh, bringing you up to date, you know, there were a few incidents that happened in between, but they were minor things. Like um, when she was first first in college, she had a roommate that that her dad had given her a knife, a pocket knife or something. Or no, she was going to give her dad a pocket knife for Christmas. And she had it on the desk and it began to spin, you know, which was weird. And then it turned and it faced north, you know, and it did it multiple times. Like it was yeah, weird. It could come in handy, actually. Yeah. And so yeah, it's like a compass, but it's just weird little stuff like that. You know, she had happen when she, that was when she was at a, 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 you know, going to school there. But she said it was so weird, like all these different things that had happened. Um, Eventually, you know, like it's, it began to slow down somewhat. She said the last year or so hadn't been very active. In fact, she said in 2023, this year, she's only had like one or two kind of weird things happen. It's like slowly winding down, hopefully, because each year has gotten less and less, you know. I hope so. I mean, I would really hate for it to be like a calm before the storm kind of thing. Yeah, because we all know that there could be, you know, you never know. But uh, anyway, folks, that's all the time we have for tonight. You know, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're here every Tuesday doing this, uh, having an hour-long show. And then we do it again on Thursdays. We're going to be having interviews on Thursdays. The other thing I want to tell you is we always have a guest on Friday on the show, on on our whatever. On the live. On the live stream. And then on Sunday, we we tell stories. Or vice versa. Sometimes Fridays, I'll tell a story if the guest wants to come on Sunday, and but we always have a guest. So thank you, folks, for tuning in. Thank you for everything. Thank you for being, uh, you know, the best audience that anybody could ask for. Get the books. Get the books. Check them out. Check out the check out the uh, YouTube channels. You can watch the live streams and get all that extra information. Now I got to tell you, for those that complain all the time, don't complain, okay? Because we don't want. We're just really not into that. Um. If you don't like it, just don't watch. But the 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 YouTube channel, we don't just tell stories on there. We do have to talk about some stuff, and we we talk a little bit about uh, we postulate on these theories, like we did a little bit tonight. You know, we go a little deeper, and we do have to keep 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 you up to breast on the news of what's going on in the paranormal. So we do go through all that. And well, we, it's because uh, many of our viewers our fans don't watch us on the live so they're extremely behind because we go through six hours every week of like content that you know people are just missing out on so every tuesday we have to try our best to catch you up without taking too much time so we try to bring you guys up to speed but you know it, it's it's mostly because of that is that we're, we're not trying to just you know waste time or anything it's because we know that a lot of our fans only watch us outside of youtube yeah, and that's unfortunate. I mean, um, I mean, it would be easier. If, I've tried talking to a couple of these people too, and they're like, "Well, I, you know, I just don't, uh, I don't have time." And I'm like, "You don't have time?" And they're like, "No, I, I, uh, I, I go to jail a lot." I'm like, "Okay, sorry." You know, or, or they got to go clean. They got to polish their armor or whatever it is they're doing. You know, it's always some sort of excuse. You know, it's like people with the conference. Oh, yeah, you know, I just, you know, I would, but uh, I, I love, I love everything, but I just don't. Not enough to go down there and see you. <laughs> and, and that's fine whatever folks whatever floats your boat man i'll see you guys uh check us out we love you good night <laughs>